the kennel. In Java, you can create arrays that store any type of data and then have quick and convenient access to each item in that array. However, in a dog kennel, you can only store dogs. Likewise, once you've chosen what your array is going to consist of, it can't store anything else. For example, you couldn't store the string Georgia Tech in an array of integers. To access a value at a certain point in an array, you use an index, which tells Java where that point is. It's important to remember that arrays start at index 0, not 1, so be careful when choosing which item you want to access. Arrays are a great, simple way of storing large amounts of data points for user input. Thanks for Okay, so that was a very, very fast overview. But um, the way that I think of arrays is kind of like what he was saying about, you know, if you if you wanted to keep track of like the employees in a company or students in your school or whatever, you wouldn't want to have to create a variable for each one, right? You wouldn't want to have employee E1 equals new employee. Employee E2 equals new employee. Employee E3, you know, if you had a company the size of Mayo, that would get old really, really fast, right? So what an array is, is a whole series of the same kind of variable. So it's, you know, like buckets that all contain the same variable um, or the same sorry type of variable but they can have different specific contents right so like he said with the dog kennel right imagine you had a hundred dogs all lined up in a kennel um, you can have dog objects in that array you cannot stick a cat object in the middle of an array of dogs it, java won't let you do that so um, the type of content has to be the same uh, for everything. That being said, you can have empty kennels, right? You can have you can you can have it. Well, we'll get there. I'll stop. There we go. So. Here are, um, you know, the three grades um, that are all integers. And you'll notice that if we had, if we tried to store them as individual variables, we would start having to add more and more and more code for each one of those um, individual variables will get really hard to maintain right? If you changed your grades from integers to doubles, you would have to go through all this code, making sure you didn't have any typos and, and remembering to do it for every single variable everywhere in your code. It would just get really, really complicated and messy very quickly if you had, you know, to keep track of 100 grades. So this is um, an example of an array of integers like grades. You're still going to have a variable name for your array. So in this case, we'll call it grades. And you have to tell it, excuse me, when you start, how, excuse me, how long your array is going to be. You have to tell it how many kennels you need for your dogs and you can't change that on the fly right you can make a new bigger one or a new smaller one and copy data over but in java once you initialize your array to a specific size it's got to stay that same size so the positions are exactly the same as strings so i don't like 
the way of numbering it the way this is numbered it, even though that's really, you'll see it a lot. And so that's why I left it is you will see positions referenced as numbers. So the first element in the array is at position zero, which can be really confusing, right? Because everybody thinks of first as one, second is two, third is three, and so on. But the beginning of the array starts at mile zero. So if you remember my highway analogy that I used with strings, it's the same with arrays, where mile zero is at that leftmost line to the left of 98. And mile post one is in between 98 and 78. So if you think of a highway, mile zero is all the way from the beginning until you get to mile one. And that's the same in arrays. The beginning is just to the left of 98. And one, mile one, is just to the right of 98. So 98 is mile zero. 78 is mile one, because the mile marker one starts to the left of 78 and goes to the right of 78. And just like when we did substring, if you take substring from zero to two, right? Mile marker zero is to the left of 98. Mile marker two is to the left of 91 or to the right of 78 in between 78 and 91. So a substring zero to two will give you those first two elements. And it's the same thing with arrays. If you chop the array between zero and two, you'll get those first two things because that's where the mile markers are. So just a little vocab here. The index is that number, the mile marker I was talking about. And the element is the thing, the value at that position. So before I move on to how to declare an error, I just want to make sure that um, we're OK with the mile marker analogy, the positions, the index, and the element so that we understand the numbering starts at zero and goes to length minus one. So if you didn't notice that, that's something to notice as well here. Um, right? This is the length of this array is eight because there are eight elements in it. But remember the indices, the indexes only go up to seven because mile marker eight is at the very end after 90. So from mile marker seven to mile marker eight, that's index seven, that's 90 right there at the end. So there is no element at index eight because we started at zero. Zero through seven is eight elements long. So give me a plus, a minus, a squiggly on the indexing of arrays. Okay, cool. Because I know that can be confusing to a lot of people. So, all right. So, this is how you tell Java that you want to create an array. It doesn't, just like saying, you know, student S. It doesn't actually create it. We haven't created anything yet. You're just telling it that you want to create a variable grades that is going to be an array. That will eventually we'll make it into an array or we'll, we'll allocate memory for an array, however you want to think about it. All we're doing right now is declaring, right? We're saying grades is an integer array. That's what those square brackets mean after the int. So if it didn't have the square brackets, Right, it would just be one grade. But the square brackets mean, okay, this is gonna be an array of integers. And the second one says, it's gonna be an array of strings. So 
So just like all other variables, if you tried to print these right now, you'd get an error. Right? Because it doesn't, you haven't put anything in it yet. So we've declared it what what type of thing it is, but now we need to actually create that thing. Just like when you declare an object, student s, you have to say new student. So we have to do the same thing with arrays. So you can use the new keyword. Right? That is a really good way to do it because it's consistent with the way we've been doing it before. So int grades declares grades is going to be an array of integers. Then we set that variable grades to a new array of integers three elements long. Okay, there's nothing in there yet except space for those three integers. So what it's done is created a new array, three integers long. And the second one says string array called names is equal to a new string array, six elements long. So this is how you declare, you know, three kennels or six kennels, or, you know, it, you have to tell how big you want to build this doghouse, how many kennels are going to be in it. Java needs to know how much memory to allocate for your array. So you tell it, I'm going to put in three integers, or I'm going to put in six strings. So just like using... Just like when we were creating objects, you know, you can use the um, the new keyword. So, like I said, there's there. Uh, I guess nothing is not the right word. So, each position, each element has something in it, but it is it is set to a default value that represents nothing. That is a more technically precise way of saying it. So in this, in this situation, all of your integers in this array will be set to zero. So it would be three integer kennels with a number zero in it. And the string would be set to null, not the empty string, but actually null, because that's what nothing means. So. I don't know that you need to worry too much about that initialization. Just understand <clears throat> that there's not really anything in the array until you put stuff in the array. So we've declared it, then we initialize the memory, and then the last thing we have to do is put stuff in the array. So you can see here, once you have created the array um, with with the second line of code here, a new integer array, three elements long, then you can set them um, individually if you want to. So why would I not be able to say grades in square bracket three equals 100? Right? If it's three elements long, why can't I say grades three equals 100? Why wouldn't that work? Anyone else care to give it a shot? Okay, Peter says there's no index three. So if I create an array three elements long, remember the mile markers, zero to one, one to two, and two to three, and it ends at three. So if I tried to either set or print or do anything with grades, 
at the third or grades with three in, in square brackets, Java would barf. It would say they're outside, uh, out of bounds exception. Um, so instead of doing it this way, um, you can actually do it all in one line, which is kind of handy. Um, and I'll show you, this is how you would both create and initialize in one line. So remember before we declared it, then we create or initialized it, created it, and then we set them individually. A more efficient way to do that is use these squiggly braces and you can create and initialize it on the values all in one line. So you still have to declare it. It's an int array of grades, and then you set grades equal to this array. String array of names equals these names. So they're separated by commas and they're in squiggly braces. I'm not gonna make you practice. So this is something you will probably see at least a little bit on the exam, um, probably at least one question here. Um, and so think about your student ID and how much data is associated with your student ID. One way to store that data would be in something called parallel arrays. So just for simplicity's sake, let's say we have a school with 100 students. And so their student IDs are from 0 to 99. You could have an array of first name, a separate array for last name, a separate array for GPA, a separate array for email. And as long as you store student ID number 15 in the 15th element of each array, then that's a really convenient way to store the data. Because all I have to do is, you know, look in every single array at element 15, and I have that student's data right at my fingertips. I don't have to look in the first name at position two, last name in position 99, you know, GPA in position seven. I just say this student ID is 15, put all their information in position 15, in all the arrays. So those are called parallel arrays because the data is parallel for each ID, each element, each index is associated with one specific person or one you know, student or employee or whatever it is. So as I mentioned at the beginning, Uh, I don't know that I want to go here quite yet. Well, I don't want to, I don't, why are they talking about array lists already? Well, I guess it is. Right, so I'm not going to talk about array lists right now, but I want you to just remember that arrays 
as opposed to array lists, when we set the size, the size is that size forever. So like I said at the beginning of 6.1, we have to tell Java the size of an array because it allocates a specific amount of memory for that array. And it never changes ever, ever, ever again. Um, you can create a new array of a different size and copy your data over, but you cannot just resize an array, add a new element onto the end. It doesn't, Java won't let you do that. So, yeah. All right, so before we go on, I'm actually gonna stop and have you do 